It's time for Fresh Oil with singer-songwriter and pastor Keith Manley. A program designed to minister the gospel of God's grace and to bring fresh oil to the brokenhearted. And now, with today's program, Pastor Keith Manley. Hello, neighbor. Welcome to Fresh Oil. I'm Keith Manley, and it's so good to be coming to you today to share share a message from God's Word. I love the Old Testament. There's some amazing stories found there that reveal God's miracle working power. Are you in need of a miracle today? You see, I believe God still does miracles. In 2 Kings 4, the prophet Elisha is met by a woman uh, who her husband was a prophet. It said, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. You know, bad things happen to good people. Just because you're serving God does not make you immune from the circumstances or the, the situations of life that bring trials. And, and the Bible says, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Imagine that. She's now faced with uh, losing her two boys to become uh, debt slaves. And Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? She replies, your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. And Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put, to, put it to one side. She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. And then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Isn't that an amazing story, friend? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on a book called Miracles Happen to Ordinary Pe People. And in that book, I'm chronicling all the miracles that I've seen over the last 40 years of ministry since I have been pastoring. And as I've reminisced some of these great miracles, I, I've seen this in over six decades of my life. It's been a great faith builder for me. You know, I, I've shared before that the Hebrew word for remember is the word zakar. And the root word for zakar, as strange as it may sound, is the word for male, which is really unusual because we men sometimes seems like we can't remember anything. But I said, why would male be the root word for the word remember? And then I realized that in the male is the reproductive seed. So when we do remember what God has done in the past, it activates that faith that allows us to see another miracle happen all over again. Miracles are not accidents. Miracles happen to those who need them, to those who want them, to those who reach out for them. Have you ever watched a race? It doesn't matter whether you're watching a 100-yard dash at the Olympics or the Daytona 500. I've yet to see a race where the finish line moves towards the runner. 100% of the time, the runner races to the finish line, or the driver drives as fast as he can go, racing towards the finish line. The same thing is true, friend, when you're pursuing a miracle from God. If you're looking for a miracle from God, you have to start moving towards that miracle. I've seen people say, I'm waiting for a miracle. They're expecting God to do everything for them, and they need to be doing some things for themselves. God will never do for you what you can do for yourself. Maybe you notice, like the little widow woman here in 2 Kings, we find ourselves today living in some very uncertain times. I've seen a number of seniors that I know getting alarmed and worried about their future. And with that in mind, God put this message on my heart today to share on the widow here in 2 Kings 4. There are several things that she did right, which brought God into her situation and produced a miracle from her house. The first thing, the prophet told her to take an inventory of what she has. In verse 2, Elisha said, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Sometimes all we can see is what we don't have, and it causes us to miss out on being thankful for what we already have. 
Elisha could have just asked God to let it rain money on this widow's front lawn, but it didn't work like that. Usually God has prepared us for our future by giving us what we have from our past. Get your eyes off of lack today and onto the provision and the blessing God has given you. The prophet asked the widow, what do you have in your house? Two thoughts about this. First, sometimes the house can represent the place where you are. We can oftentimes turn to the left or to the right, searching for our miracle when God wants to do the miracle right where you are. We often think if I could only get to this famous person to have him or her lay hands on me, I would be healed. Why not start where you are with the person you know, your prayer partner? There's a miracle in your house. We have a miracle working God in our lives. The house can also represent your body. See, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 tells us, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? If there's something in your body that's not right today, God can work a miracle in you or in in your life and bring healing to your body. Take an inventory of what you have. For Moses, God said, hey, what do you have in your hand? Just this rod. God said, throw it down. And it became a snake. And, And with that rod, Moses parted the Red Sea. You might be thinking today, Keith, I don't have what it takes for a miracle in my life. Start by giving God your obedience. The second point I want to make about this story today is sometimes we deem small things as irrelevant. The second half of verse two, it says, your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. My goodness, a little oil is worth a lot today. God is saying to her, or the prophet, through the prophet, he's saying, take an inventory. What do you have in your life that God can use? For the widow, it was just a little oil that she had in her house. For you, it's something God can use in your life to bring about what it is that you're needing. Now look at verse 3. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Sometimes, you know, I would find that very difficult to ask my neighbors. Sometimes what God tells us to do can seem difficult for us or something we don't want to do. But, but through the prophet, he tells her, go around and ask your neighbors for empty jars. And then I love the fact that he says, don't ask for just a few. <laughs> Sometimes I think we sell God short. We, we, we have small faith. We, we can't imagine God doing so much that we have more than enough. But Elisha told her, don't ask for just a few. And then he said, then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Now that's very important. Why? Because sometimes people can rob you of your faith. You can get around some negative people and it can really impact your life. She had to go inside and shut the door. She knew, God knew, that there would be someone who would say, oh, that's useless. You just got a little bit of oil. Why do you need all these jars? And then it said, pour oil into all the jars and as each is filled, put it to one side. See, I don't believe she had enough to fill even one jar. But as she began pouring, that's when the miracle started happening. See, the prophet demands her to be bold when he said, don't just ask for just a few. Maybe you're at this place today where you need to get alone with God and hear his voice, and then you just need to start pouring. The third thing I notice about this little story is having faith many times doesn't make sense. And sometimes it makes us uncomfortable. You see, many times what God tells us to do can seem impossible because if it wasn't, we could do it ourselves, and we wouldn't need God's help. Go in, go around and ask all your neighbors for these empty jars and don't ask for a few. Wow. Don't you know that Jesus looked ridiculous when he started to feed the 5,000 people with just a sack lunch that a little boy brought that day? But when he started breaking the bread and distributing it, there was multiplication that happened. You have to put aside what others think, uh, or or you, you might let it rob you of your miracle. There's a miracle for you today, but in order to receive it, you first have to let go and let God. Now, the fourth point I want to make today is having faith doesn't mean we just sit around 
and let God do all the work. So many people just want to sit around and wait on God to do it all. And he says, you got to step out of your boat. You got to get your feet wet. You got to step into the Red Sea and then he'll begin to part the water. In verse five, it said, they brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Friend, we need to get busy and do our part and then God will always do his part. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Sometimes we, we're content with just a little trickle, but I love this gal. It says she just kept pouring until all the jars were full. And then she says, bring me another one. He says, they're all filled. And then the Bible says the oil stopped flowing. You know what I love about this? God knows just how much you need. And he also is the God who's more than enough. That's one of the names for God. The God who is more than enough. Friend, I want you to know today, no matter what you're facing, no matter how impossible the odds are against you, God is more than enough. In James chapter 4, in verse 2, it says you do not have because you do not ask God. See, the fifth point I want to make today is ask and you shall receive. The little woman wasn't afraid to ask the prophet to intervene on her behalf for God. She said her husband was a righteous man. You know he did good, so I'm asking you, I need help. And, and uh, the Bible said she cried out to Elisha. And you know what, friend? God heard her prayer. I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to see that many times we have not because we ask not. And, it, it, and that many times in this life, had we only asked God, he was more than willing to hear our cry and to meet our needs. You know, friend, in the Bible, the oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and God's anointing. And uh, I believe when I say let the oil flow, I believe God wants us to let his spirit flow through our lives. And, and then he begins to touch those around us. But it begins with a simple act of obedience. I don't know why you uh, tuned in today, why you're listening to uh, this on the radio or on the podcast, but I do believe that it's no accident. I believe that God ordered our steps today and he calls you to be listening at just the right place at just the right time. Friend, if you need a miracle today, the first thing you need to do is you need to ask God uh, for that miracle. He said, you have not because you ask not. And then what we need to do is stop and take a look at what's in our hands. Take a look at what God has already given us in our lives. We're living in uncertain times. We're living in times where we're really seeing the economy uh, inflation go up and we're seeing the dollar shrink. And you say, Keith, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. God has always provided for his people and he doesn't change. He's not going to quit right now. Maybe you're listening today and you're, you're dealing with a, a physical infirmity in your life. And you say, Keith, the doctors have given me a real bad report. Well, I want you to know something today. My God is bigger than the report from your doctor. He can t heal your body. He can meet your needs. And maybe you're facing a financial need and you say, Keith, I I've got bills to pay and there's just not enough money in the bank to pay them. Well, I'm going to tell you, friend, start small, begin doing what you can do, and then you'll see God come through for you. It happens every time. He's never failed me. Miracles happen to ordinary people. I so appreciate you listening to the program today here on Fresh Oil. It's such a joy to come to you each weekday and, and share something that will hopefully build your faith and cause you to get your eyes on Jesus and not on your circumstances. Today, let the oil flow. Let God's Holy Spirit move in your life and you're going to see God come through for you. He can do the impossible, friend. He loves you. He really, really does. Stop by our website at weneedgod.com and drop me a line today. Let me know you're listening. Thanks for joining us today. Fresh Oil with Pastor Keith Manley. Fresh Oil is an outreach of Grace Family Church in Rockford, Illinois, and can be heard each weekday at this same time. You can reach us online at weneedgod.com. Until next time, remember, 
God's love for you is unconditional, and He makes His mercies new every morning.